You can go and drink the sea. Don't... Democratically, we left. We said we are not Nigerians. The British forced us into this, what they call administrative union of Nigeria, where we are administered from Enugu, not even from Lagos. From Enugu, you will not, I mean, if you see what I mean, you be, you, we are we, a colony within a colony. Our people said, no, we are not. So we moved away from that. It's 54, we established a government. And then we I'm glad that you remember what you went through in Nigeria. Uh, today, uh, Chair Ayaba and the rest, they are signing alliance with Biafra. My question is, how far have you guys gone with that alliance? And how is it working for you? Right? Just seeking attention. Oh, the taxi caller. Oh, you, you attention. They want to seek attention at all costs. Guys, there are better ways to go about this. These are very uh, trivial ways for you to make an impact in your community. This is a very trivial way for you to make an impact in your community. There are better ways to go about this. Yeah, and you can learn. This is very cheap. This is cheap fame cheap ways of seeking attention it not end up well with you guys it will not it will not end up well with you guys government in Boya, very democratic yeah. our people are very cooperative but within five short years 54 to 59 everything just kaput as i said our people started speaking different tongues we started arguing amongst themselves. They could not even think about the destiny of the nation and of the people. The nations and the UK. And I've had occasion to tell the UK MPs. I said, you guys, you are responsible for our calamity. Did you hear that victim strategy? He has blamed the UK already. All right? He has blamed the UK of being responsible for their calamity. And I'm saying... That is how victims behave. They have a universal standard of operating. Number one, blame. Do not take responsibility for your own life. Do not take responsibility for your destiny. Look for someone that you can blame so that you can feel comfortable about your situation. And that is why we are emerging in this generation and say, we are not going to blame no one. We will take 100% responsibility of our lives, our destiny, and our future. No blame. If you come around me and you have to blame, blame, blame. No, I'm like, goodbye. If you don't change this habit, you can't hang around me blaming someone as to the reason why you are not who you were supposed to be. Those kind of people never do anything, never build anything. Always create confusion. Always divide. I'm talking about human nature, not the Anglophone, Francophone crisis. Do you understand? Because when you understand human nature, and then you can be able to understand individuals like this better. How human beings behave. If a human being thinks that someone else is responsible for the outcome of their life, there is no way for them to take action and fix their life. Because there's no incentive. If someone else has the power, then how can you change your situation? If someone else has the power, then how can you even find solution to your problem? Are you guys understanding human nature? Anyone that blames is called a victim. They are helpless. And so by definition, they cannot even win even the fight that they have started. Because they are victims. Victims, just the word. Blaming someone already weakens you. To even take action and win. Any course of action. Any fight. When you open up your mouth, the first thing that comes to your mind is someone else is responsible for why you are here. That alone cripples you from victory. It cripples you from even winning. It cripples you from for looking like... It, it cripples you from looking for solution to solve your problem. Because this is the position that you came into this fight with as a victim. And you have papers, documents, and books that you've written on how victimized you are. You've started with Britain, you've gone everywhere around the world, and you've complained the same way. So by definition, you're doomed to fail. 
And do you guys understand why I'm doing what I'm doing here? Because if you don't understand this from how human behavior actually evolves over time, you will be looking at Anglophone, Francophones, and you'll be blinded going underneath the individual, their insecurities, their little fears, how they feel inside, inferior, and, and how all of that. Th that is the motivation. And then it will erupt out of them uh, through marginalization, through Anglophone crisis. But from within is an individual. From within is an individual that feels inferior, is an individual that feels insignificant, is an individual that is filled with pain and regret, is an individual that is confused about their own existence. All of these intricacies are going to erupt and emerge out through Anglophone crisis, through marginalization and through all of this. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? I must be part of that solution. They all repeat that same answer. Oh, we respect your decision in 1961 to join French Cameroon. I said, rubbish. They manufactured this whole thing about lack of economic viability, which again was against international law. Forced us into this arrangement. They say it was an alternative, was a choice. There was no choice. Under international law, when you want to decolonize a territory, there are three options. The person has to either have independence, they will have to have integration or any other political status chosen by themselves. So if the so this is the whole shenanigans, right? You start by thinking everything that is going on here is a mistake. You are a victim. And the UK is to be blamed. You go meet the UK authorities, they tell you, oh, you guys made a decision. You guys were not economically viable. And then you say no. That is rubbish. We don't believe that. Uh, right? Are, are you guys understanding how people think? We don't believe that. No. They are saying you were not economically viable. They just discovered OA in 72. You guys were not economically viable. They saw that. And you debunk that. Right? This nation has achieved success at a level that it would take us 100 or 200 years to get to where UK is. And if they tell you that you have these issues and you argue, forget about that kind of individual. You cannot even get them to the place where they will give you advice on how to build your economy because you will not take it. You know too much. You, after all, you have a doctorate behind your name, so you know too much because you've been in the classrooms and they taught you. And then my question is, you are angry with UK. You don't like them. They did you wrong. Why do you want to fight to uphold a legacy that you adopted from them? Is this making sense? Why would you fight your fellow brother because of a legacy from someone that you believe is a traitor that did you wrong? Are you seeing the confusion? Their own logic is bouncing back and they are not getting it. They are not getting the feedback. So at the end of the day, the UK did uh, the wrong thing, right? They made poor decisions. They didn't know better. You know better today than the UK. So why do you even want to fight to uphold the Anglo-Saxon culture? If the Anglo-Saxon culture is responsible for your subjugation and your marginalization, the closure of your banks, the closure of your factories, why do you even want their heritage? This is ironical. This is the delusion that these individuals find themselves in. And they are not getting in the feedback of what is coming out of their mouth. They don't reason, think about what is coming out of their mouth. After all, they have a doctorate degree behind their name. So what they are saying is true, right? It's, it's rational. It makes sense. The person has been a teacher. He's been in classrooms. He has a doctorate behind his name. They were the ones who started uh, Ambazonia, SCNC. And come on, they should know something. And you are fighting so hard to uphold a legacy of a colonial master that you blame the most. I think you blame the UK more than you even blame France. But yet you want to uphold the legacy of UK. <sighs> hmm.
this book thing, man. I mean, like, it's confusing. I mean, like, I, are you guys understand what I'm saying? All right. If you like this video, you're going to like this other episode and you can watch it by clicking right here.